notes from today's session. We want you to take really good notes. And we want you to use that Q&A panel there to ask any questions you might have. Don't stress if we don't get to them immediately. We are going to be taking those at the end and doing some, um, some coaching at the end as well. If you want to reach us at any time after today's session, you can reach us on all social media platforms at Daryl Speaks. Daryl is the author of three books, all published by McGraw-Hill Publishers. That first one you see there, How to Become a Power Agent in Real Estate, is actually one of the top-selling books to real estate agents on Amazon. Daryl was named this year by Risk Media Magazine for the fourth year in a row, I might add, as one of the top newsmakers and influencers. He also is the recipient of the coveted CSP designation, which is only given to less than 2% of speakers worldwide on that note. Daryl, take it away. Thank you, Julie. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to this session on how to generate a surge of listings from one open house. This is one of my favorite things to teach because we only started teaching a few years ago. And um, after a lot of research and talking to fellow uh, coaching members that have had a lot of success. So uh, before I get into the content, I have a couple of announcements. And one is to address a question. I see that we have some new uh, people to us. And um, so you might have that question, is this uh, hour, hour and a half, uh, actually it's an hour and a half webinar. Is it a sales pitch? And the question is no, but just to be clear, there's two types of people on this group. Uh, one group is people that are in our coaching program and they're called power agents. And these weekly trainings is actually part of their membership. Um, the other group that's on here, uh, you're not power agents, uh, but you're our guest. And we're really excited the guests are here and the guests are going to get a tremendous amount of value because it's a training session. It's not a, a sales pitch. But the reason why I always start off this way is to be clear that from time to time, uh, I'll be talking directly to our coaching members about something that I'm teaching that's on the website. And so that's, I just want the guests to understand that's why we're doing that. But the other thing is we have for the guests at the end of the call, you know, what is a power agent? You want to like become one. Uh, we have like these bonuses for you. So at the end, I'll cover this and there's a little pop-up that just came up, but the bonuses that you see on the screen for the guests, we send these to you right away. They're part of the training, but we send it to you in the email. There's PowerPoint, there's e-guides. I mean, literally this stuff we sell, if we were to sell it, uh, live, it would it would go for almost two thousand dollars, but the trial is only five dollars, so it's like a ridiculous offer. And but we'll talk about that at the end. Right now, I do want to talk to the power agents just for a minute. Power agents, everything that I'm teaching you today, if when you go into the classroom, and if you were to search the word open house, almost everything that you're seeing um, is that I'm teaching today. You're going to find in the classroom, plus. The copy of the slides, Power Agents, are in there for you as well. And the guests, um, you know, if you become Power Agent, we'll get you a copy of the slides as well. Okay, so let's talk about, now take a lot of notes because this is fire hose of meat. You know, some of these training sessions, I usually have a slide for this, uh, so let me just talk to you. Some of my training sessions that I do each week, I'll go wide on a topic, like I'll teach a little bit of a bunch of things, like if it's farming, I'll show a bunch of different marketing pieces, or if it's um, um, uh, self-promotion, same concept. This particular topic, I'm going deep, right? I am just talking about the open house. So this is all inclusive. And what I'm going to share with you today is the four P's to making a successful open house. Uh, the first P is preparation. Like what do you do before the day of the open house? Uh, how do you prepare for it? Then how do you promote it? Somebody said that, you know, they're good at converting, but they would like to have more than just, you know, two or three people showing up. So I'm going to show you how to have 20 or 30 people show up through the promotion. Presentation is actually presenting the day of the open house, right? So it's maybe not the best word, but I was trying to go with the four Ps. <laughs> so presentation was the word I went with. And the last one, if somebody's got a better word, let me know that begins with a P. And then the last P is post open house, which is key. The follow-up 
because I'm, I'm if I don't say this now, uh, ladies and gents, let me just say it because it just came to me. A, an open house we should really look at as a lead generation. If you do what I'm telling you and you get a bunch of people coming, 20, 30, 40 people, you won't have the time to get deep with them in qualifying them. That will be in the post-production. What you want to do, it's almost like a movie, yeah? Like what they do in a movie, when they're filming a movie, they'll film a lot of sh shots and at different angles. And a lot of that doesn't make it into the final finished product. They take all of that footage, they go into the editing room, and for months they edit and create the movie from all of this extra material. So they start with this, and then they come with the finished product. That's the open house. You have a lot of people that are going to come, and then you're going to look for the gold in that with those three or four great buyers. Okay, let's continue on. I'm going to start with the first P, which is preparation. And I see people are already writing their questions. I love it. So, gang, you can continue to write your questions. We're going to hold it in the queue. And at the end of this, I'm going to, uh, after I finish training, I'm going to go, we're going to answer everybody's question. We will not end this webinar till everybody's question is answered. I promise you that. Okay, so let's talk about preparation. So Power Agents, what I did for you is created this cheat sheet on what I'm going to teach you now on the four Ps, and it's in your classroom. So let's, uh, but let me go specific now and teach each one of these. So the first thing is, you, the criteria for you to consider when doing an open house, open houses, when they're new to the market, that's great criteria, right? So uh, as soon as something comes, hit do that open house. Second criteria is a non-gated neighborhood. I'm not saying to not do non-gated or gated uh, communities. Of course, if you've got a listing, it's gated, you should do it. What I'm saying is if you had a choice, if you're looking to generate leads, Non-gated is better. It's obvious why. It's just easier, you know, for buyers to come in and they've got to go through the gate and the security and give the, ad. you know, it's just a, it's a, it could be an uncomfortable, it's not a welcoming feeling for an open house person. Um, close to major streets and visible location. Now, why would I say, why is that a criteria? Here's why. Because one of the things I'm going to teach you is signage. One of the key ingredients to having a successful open house is the promotion, and part of that is signage. Now, you've got social media, you've got mailings, you've got phone, you've got all this stuff to do. Um, oh, you know what? I don't know if I have this in these slides. Hang on a second. Everybody jot this down. I have an extra thing for you really quick. Son of a gun. Slide dial. We talked about it on our coaching call Monday. One of the things you should do, just, just like that, jot that down, slide dial. It's a company we recommend. I think they're awesome where you can upload a list of phone numbers, let's say from the area that you're doing the open house, record a message that goes directly to their voicemail. Um, so it doesn't ring their cell. You ever have that happen where your cell, you like, you missed a call and you're like, how did I miss a call? It says message, right? And you play the message. That's what slide out does. It bypasses ring the phone, goes right to a person's voicemail. And your voicemail would sound something like this. Hi, this is Daryl Davis from Power Realty. I'm sorry that I missed you. The reason why I was calling is your neighbor at 1010 Hanahana Lane has hired me to do an open house for them. And uh, I just wanted to personally invite you to the open house. And if you know of anybody who's thinking about buying the area, it's going to be this date and this time. Please introduce yourself, uh, whatever. So that's awesome. Okay. So going back to what I was saying, oh, close to visible street. So by the way, this happens. If you're new to me, I sometimes interrupt myself when I have a thought and an idea. I hope that's okay. It's usually to benefit you. So, okay. So when you put a, when, if you're going to drag people in, my broker, my mentor, Matt Levin, he used to tell me, we, our open houses were the bomb. We had the best turnout of any brokerage because of what I'm going to share with you. And this is one of them. He said, that um, you put signs out on the street like the Pie Piper. You don't put one or two. You're going to put multiples to, to bring the public. They're already in their car. They're already out. You bring them in. I'll show you how to do that. Um, obviously, price to sell, that's an easy criteria. Okay, continuing on. If you don't have a listing, um, consider asking agents in your office, even asking agents and other companies, They'll, they'll, I hear power agents, they tell me this all the time. Yeah, somebody from ABC Realty let me do an open house on their listing. 
I, I don't understand that. I, I personally wouldn't do that. I, I wouldn't give a, 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 another real estate from another company my list and do an open house. But some of them do. I, I, I Again, I don't understand it. So you can ask. Ask for agents in your office. Do you mind if I do an open house? I need to generate some business. And I'll give you 10% of any business generated from it. Use the open house as an opportunity to stage photos and update your listing. Aha, I love this. Because some of you, you know, you got a listing. The homeowner is, it's nasty. And you don't know how to tell them, like, you're, you know, you're living like a pig over here. <laughs> It's, it's, ooh, what's that smell? You know, when people, buyers walk in and say, how many cats do they have? That's not good. And, and, and we don't know how to tell the homeowners sometimes that this is nasty. So what you can do is you use the open house as the excuse for them to, we got to, and here's how you do. You tell, listen, Mr. And Miss Hanna, there's two types of homes we all live in. I live in, in, in two homes. You live in two. And, and the two homes are, there's the home we live in day in and day out. And then there's the home we live in when we have company over. <laughs> so like the holidays, it's Christmas. Like you should see my house at Christmas time. Everything's perfect. I have fine china out, the best bed spread. Everything's beautiful. And, uh, that's the other house that I live in. So when you're selling your house, Mr. and Mrs. Anna, Anna, we need to have the house that you have company over in ho the holiday events. Now, in showing them preparing it, watch this. So what we did, Power Agents, you have this home staging checklist that's in the classroom. And there's another one here, which is repairs to consider before selling. So... Everybody, what you do, and Power Agents, let me just tell you where that is. You go to classroom. When you go to classroom, you then go to servicing listings because that's a listing thing um, when it's your client. And you will see the staging checklist and preparing for a photo shoot. So anyway, let me go back to my point here, gang. So what you do is you tell a homeowner, listen, Mr. And Ms. Hanna, what we're going to do is at the we're going to have the open house Saturday. It's really important that we have the holiday house that we live in um, and we do it as best as we can. If you want, I have uh, some suggestions on staging. I can give you some tips as well. Uh, but even just putting stuff away and making it picture perfect would be awesome. Now watch what happens. When they do that, you should come in and re shoot your photos if your MLS photos are nasty because they didn't cooperate that time, right? So, okay, let's go on. I uh, hope you guys are learning anything here. Uh, if you're learning something, tell me what you like so far. You can talk to me because I'll read it. So tell me if you're liking any of this. All right, here's the next thing. In a hot, oh man, oh man, I'm passionate about this. I don't know why in, in heaven's sake, we're doing two hour, three hour, two, two to three hour open house, not even three hours. Most agents do two hours. Let me explain a concept to you in retail business. It's called pop up stores. A lot of you know what this is. A pop up store is a temporary store. You know, when you go into a mall and you see those, those, those key, those, um, come as camera, those carts or whatever that's in the middle of kiosk? the aisle. What's that, Julie? A kiosk. A kiosk. In the middle of the thing, that's like a pop-up store. Or when you go to a flea market, they take out a table, they put they put their tchotchkes out, they put up a paper sign. But I mean, that's that's a pop-up store. At the end of the day, the pop-up store closes, it comes down. An open house for you is a pop-up store. Now, why in, in heaven's sake would you only keep your store open for two hours? The whole point of this is to generate leads. I can tell you from a personal experience, again, because last year or the year before, we were thinking about moving. So we were looking at houses, going to open houses. We decided to stay and, and put the money into our current home. But in any event, when we were looking at houses, and I would look at these open houses, it was frustrating because there might have been, you know, let's say four houses that I wanted to look at. But you can only in the open house segment, but you can only get to three of them based on the time, because, of course, it's almost like they all had a meeting. Hey, let's all have hold open houses at the same exact time, 11 to one or 12 to two. And it makes it hard. The agents that do 10 or nine, the, like it's different than what everybody else does in the market. And you stay later. So if you open up early and stay later, I would do at least 10 to three, 10 to four. Why not? Because the, the whole purpose here of generating leads 
Uh, schedule your open house before or after the other common ones, which is what I just said. I mean, if you're going to go with two hours and, and if in your market it's 12 to noon, then go, you know, go 10 to or if it's 11 to 1, if those are the two common, 11 to 1, 12 to 2, then do yours from 10 to 12. Like get an extra hour so that way you're ahead of everybody or at the end of everybody. Um, so Meredith, you like that? Love the everyday house and holiday house. Great way to approach the seller's thinking. Yes, very good. Thank you. Now let's talk about proper signage. Okay. I'm going to teach you something that a lot of you are probably not going to do, but I'm going to tell you, this is what made my company. Number one, the first six months we opened up, we were a big listing company. I'm going to show you one of the secrets that we did. And is Eric Riley on the call? If Eric Riley is on the call, can you search the guests on the attendees, Julie, and tell me if Eric Riley's on the call? Sure, give me a sec. Um, Eric Riley is one of our power agents, but he also, um, uh, we work together in the same company. Um, anyway, so this is, let me tell you what part, I'm going to show you this is an old photo because this is back when there was still a Polaroid black and white. <laughs> Some of the younger kids don't know what the hell I just said. So let me show you this, this photo. Okay. He's not on the call. Okay. Um, thanks, Jewel. Um, so, um, this over here is Liz. <laughs> you can't tell it. It's just like a shadow, but I know that's Liz. And Liz was one of my agents and she is hold, she is uh, stapling up on the telephone pole. Do you see that road? That road is uh, Oceanside highway. It's a busy, busy, busy road. So she's putting up this, this open house sign. Now, let me just point it out to you. Let me give you the concept, and I'll show you how you can do this, even though I, uh, you, you may not do it, but I'm going to show you how to make it easier, so maybe you will do it. At the top over there is the company logo, Mac Levitt Realty. Then uh, it said open house. Now, now Mac Levitt and open house was pre-printed on that size, like, like a poster board size. Now, the address... That address there, it says Knight Street, 30, 36 Knight Street. That was stapled onto it. I'm going to show you a different version so it'll be easier for you to see it. I, when I was selling one of my investment properties, I decided to make the sign just for the training so you guys can get a better picture of it. Now, this, I, obviously, because I, I don't have a pre-printed open house and I don't have a company name on it, but um, but but imagine that that's pre-printed and the, and the address, you staple it on because you reuse these. And that fluorescent arrow points people down, tell them, hey, listen, go to keep going straight. You're going to go to Mill Drive, 55 Mill Drive. There's an open house. Now, let me tell you what our company policy was when we did this. Our company policy when we did public open houses was you had to put a minimum of 10 of these signs out so if the house was here, you would put the signs branching out so that way you brought people in. Now, when other people would get two or three people that are open houses, this was a normal market and most brokers got two or three attendees. Well, we got like 30 or 40. I mean, it was crazy. And it's because of these signs. Oh, sorry. I'm going back to the sign. Now, so we brought them in like a Pied Piper. Now, here's the, and because you're a big listing office, we'd have at least um, four, four to six open houses a day, Saturday, and then another on Sunday. So if you do the math, we had um, over 100 of these signs out every weekend. Now, when you go on a FISBO appointment, you say to a homo, Mr. 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 Wahana, one of the things we do is we do this market. I know it's a lot of, it's a lot of extra work for us, but the reason why we do it is because it helps our client. We get tons of turnout. Here's a sign-in sheet from one of my recent ones to show you. And whenever we say that to a FISBO, I say, by the way, have you ever seen our signs? And this is what they would say almost every weekend. So the open houses became almost the signs in of themselves became advertisements for us. Now, because I know a lot of you may not go through the trouble of doing this uh, for a bunch of reasons, I have a backup idea for you, is if you were to take these signs, and by the way, this is before the internet, so we have other tools at our disposal, so even if you don't do this, we have other marketing we're going to talk about, but do you see these feather, uh, these, these, uh, feather flag signs um, or feather flags? Now, this is D-Sign. I thought D-Sign had the biggest ones, 11 feet. 
Then I went to Amazon and I searched it for you and I found um, the seven feet, 12 feet, that, that middle one, the second one there says 12 feet. But let me tell you, I just found the biggest one, which is this is the one I would buy. Uh, a little bit more expensive, but Vistaprint has 15 feet signs that you can customize. The other ones, you can't customize it. You just buy it says open house. This, you customize it. You put your company low. You put your name on it. You put open house. Now, let me tell you. Now, this one over here, double print, is $250. Single side is $150. Now, imagine if you put some of those out, like on the corner where your house is, and maybe another one and another one, and somehow put an arrow on those easels. I'm telling you, this is good stuff. Okay, let me continue on. Okay, gather your neighborhood list. So you're going to gather your list of people that you're going to promote this to. Um, now, how do you get a list? There's a couple of ways you can get a neighborhood list. You can call it cold directory. Uh, you can purchase uh, lists from them. They are incredible. They are the best, best viable information. But there's another way to get it, which is Red X. And I'll show you what Red X looks like. It's called GeoLeads. Red X is this great company for real estate agents. We, sorry, we love Red X. They have exp Fizbo's expired, da, da, da. Well, one of their products is called GeoLeads. Now, GeoLeads, when you type in an address and you say, give me all the houses around this address, you see those little dots there? That's what it looks like. And then you purchase the list and then you download the list and now the list is yours. Now, let me tell you why you're doing this. So one of the things you're going to do before you do the public open house, by the way, are you ready to, do you want to know how to get uh, at least 10 CMAs from one strategy, 10 CMAs, 10 homos. You ready? Cause I'm going to give it to you. I'm getting excited now. When you, when you do an open house for the public, what sometimes what happens is the nosy neighbor comes, the nosy neighbor comes and they don't tell you they're the neighbor because they're being nosy and they're trying to hide it. So they, they, they make up a story. Oh, do you live in the area? No, no, we, we're just looking, we're thinking about buying this area, you know, and they make up, but they, they live right next door. Now you're talking to this neighbor who's pretending to be a buyer. You're wasting energy. That's a distraction. And now because this person lied to you, then you, they're never going to be honest with you. So now you have a potential listing that you're never going to get because they box themselves into a lie. You follow me? So this is what I want you to do. What I want you to do after you get your list of all the neighbors around this house that you're going to do, and by the way, if you don't have any listings and you do an open house for an agent in your office, you now there's a strategy here. You're going to do the same thing. You're going to buy the list. Then you're going to get Avery labels. Power agents, I'll tell you which one to get. You buy Avery, not Avery labels, Avery um, greeting cards, invitations. Invitations. Thank you, Julie. And you're going to host a neighborhood open house. Now, let me show you this. This is the bomb. This is the, the front and back. Now, Power Agents, we designed this for you. So Power Agents, when you go into the classroom and you type open house, you will find the template for this that you can edit the, the heck out of it. You can put your logo on it and blah, blah, blah. Um, and you don't have to learn new software. You can't see it. It says Avery 3266, 3266. So we create a template for that Avery model. So you'll print it out right on your laser, but I mean, It'll be lined up perfect. Now, it says here, um, you are personally invited and you make it look like a wedding invitation. This is important. You're going to handwrite the thing, put a real stamp. It looks like a wedding invitation. And you're going to mail it out to 50 homeowners. And, and they open it up. It says, you're invited. You see the black thing? You're personally invited. Not invited. You're personally invited. And then when they open it up, it says, you're personally invited to the neighborhood open house as the homeowner, that circle, as the homeowner will not be present, I will be providing a personal tour of the home at yada, yada. Let me tell, oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't share my screen. Son of a gun. I keep looking at the screen. So, so you all, I, Julie, if I ever forget to press my button, <laughs> just remind me to press my button. So it's black. It's you're personally invited. It looks like a wedding invitation with the real stamp. It says you're personally invited to the neighborhood open house. And you see that thing circled in red. It says, as the homeowner will not be present, I will provide a personal tour of the home. Now, let me tell you something. 
if you mail out 50 of these cards telling the neighbors the homeowner will not be home, how many do you think are going to show up? Probably 52 because two nosy neighbors heard about it, didn't get the invitation. They're coming anyway. Now, when you're taking these people through, you're not trying to sell the house. You know, they're not they're not the buyers. They're they're the neighbors. So it's a different thing. Now you're torn, you're taking them through the house, but you're building reports. Say, so thanks for coming. Have you how long have you lived in the neighborhood? Do you live on this block? Or do, oh, okay, good. Do you have this style style? Or you have a different style? How long have you lived here? Have you ever thought about moving? If you were gonna move to, where would you move to? And let me ask you this: do you know the value of your home? This is what I think. Every homeowner should have an updated market analysis on the house every year, just like you get a physical. Physical every year. You should do that with your house. Why don't I do this? I don't mind. When I find the time, I'll come over, take a look at your house, and I'll give you an updated market analysis. You might be amazed at how much house is worth in today's market. But I mean, you should generate out of 50 neighbors coming at least 10, 20, 30 CMAs from this one technique here. But a mic drop. Okay, now let's continue. Next one, create an open house flyer and promotional pieces. You need your marketing pieces when you're preparing for this thing. Um, power agents, if you go to servicing listings, you're going to see these types of flyers like this. Ask a friend to be a neighbor. You're personally invited to attend this open house. So there's, there's a flyer you can do. I like that one. Uh, open house. These are postcards plus social media. These, some of these are a combination, okay? Now, let me give you another tip on this with these flyers and promotional stuff. This, this is another one of our fan companies. So power, my experienced power agents that have been with me for a while, you know that uh, we vet our companies and uh, there's criteria we have. Number one is they got to give a deal that they don't give to anybody else. Number two, they got a high level of integrity. Number three, they got to have great customer service. Box Brownie is one of these companies. We stand behind them. We love this company. What they do is they take digital photo. They take a photo of a house and they'll digitally clean it up for you. And they do other things. I'm not going to go into all the features they have. They're not expensive. I think to do one photo, you see this photo you're looking at on the screen over to the left with the hard wood. That's the before that's the real photo. And you'll notice the backyard. Look at how nasty the backyard, the patio area is. And then look at how they clean up the patio. They actually gave it a bar. They actually create a virtual barbecue. Now, uh, it depends. When you really uh, fix a photo like this one here, you need to communicate that on the listing because you don't want to be out of integrity. So you should say this room has been digitally enhanced. Um, that's that's number one. But um, but the photo, I think it's like two dollars to do one photo. <laughs> It's like nothing. And uh, power agents, they gave you a $40 coupon so you can go crazy. But they do other things too, like floor plans and, and blueprints. Here's a picture of another one. See, now this one here, they actually took the, on the left, it's it's the, the homeowner. Obviously they have children, <laughs> at least I hope so, or they're, 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 they're nutty about Smurfs. So what they did, Box Brownie, is not only did they remove the Smurf, but they they decorated the house virtually too. So this is cool stuff when you're when you're creating your promotional pieces as well. OK, let's continue on with our preparation. I'm still just on the first P. Um, oh, we just had, by the way, Power Ages, we just had a webinar with Box Brownie. It's in the webinars on demand where she goes through there, all the stuff and how to use it. So know that. OK, be prepared to answer questions. Now, this is really important. Oh, my goodness. When I went on open houses, so when I went, when I was looking, sometimes agents didn't know who I was. So a lot of times they did, but so when they like there was one, the agent didn't know who I was. And beautiful house, one point five on the water, beautiful. There was this atrium, like off the kitchen. There was like a sunroom or an atrium, whatever you call it. It was a glass room. It's hot though. The sun was beating in it, and I saw it had. This uh, not a skylight. It was it was like a louver with a chain. It, it looked a little old, but it looked cool uh, to open it up to let air in there. So I asked the agent. I said, "How do you open up the the louver? I want to see how it works." And you know what she said? Oh, I don't know. So I had to try and figure it out. I said, "Oh, I think it's this button here. I'm not going to press it." But she, oh yeah, I, I've never see, you've seen that before. And and you know what? It just it was so horrific. 
you know, that an agent didn't know that question to that answer. It should, that's why, that's why you're getting paid like, you know, 40, $50,000. You should know how to, op how the window opens when a buyer asks. Here's some common questions you should be prepared for. Why is the seller selling? Now, I'm not saying be prepared like you should tell the buyer this, but you should be prepared how you're going to say it. You don't want to be hemming and hawing and make the buyer feel like you're lying to them. You know, why is the seller selling? Oh, well, you know, they're, they're just looking for a change. <laughs> so have, have an authentic answer. Be prepared so that way you're not hemming and hawing for a made-up answer. Because that'll make you look bad with that buyer. How long has the house been on the market? Some of us think that if we say it's been on the market longer than what the average is right now, then we have to justify it. So we'll answer something like this. Well, you know, the house has been on the market for 45 days. But it, it's in the beginning, uh, it's because we really didn't fix some of the things that now we fixed it. And now we think it's going to go quick. See, don't defend that because you're already telling this buyer that there's a, there was a problem or you think it should have sold by now. So be prepared. Rehearse your answers. How, how, have there been any recent improvements or renovations? You know, if there was a problem that was fixed, don't, don't panic. You just answer it straight. Just play like poker. Say, yes, they just fixed. They just uh, put in a whole new boiler and new roof. You don't have to tell them the roof caved in just before you listed it. <laughs> Um, how much are the utilities? Uh, how, have there been any offers made? Uh, why are the sellers planning to close or wh when are they planning to close? What does this do and how does this work? <laughs> and that's the, I put that in there for my personal story that I had. Okay. So, um, I'm going to listen. I know some of you are trying to write all this power agents. You're getting a copy of the slides. You have a copy of the slides, the guests, we are going to um, uh, give that to you if you become power agent at the end. So we'll talk about that. Be familiar with the area. So, you know, with this day and age of fair housing and the, and the anxiety that has been instilled in us, uh, that, you know, <laughs> it's, sometimes you feel like you shouldn't even have any listings and not talk to anybody because you're going to offend somebody against some rule. So what I can tell you what you can do is if you're concerned about fair housing and answering questions about the neighborhood, just simply direct them to sources like U.S. News, Best High Schools. Um, and and um, that's a good source. There's a couple of other sources, uh, um, school grade, I think, is something like that. So just share, share the facts with them on those third parties on how they rate the schools and stuff like that. Okay. Oh, create a frequently asked question sheet. I love this. I love this. So let me show you. Um, this is a sample of the frequently asked questions. Let me zoom in on this a little bit. Um, how, how, how old are the appliances? How old is the roof? What type of heating? How many utilities do they have? Now, some of this stuff is going to be answered in the MLS. Some of it, it may not be. But what's listen, what's good about this it's um, another marketing piece for you, though, right? So it's another takeaway. It's another uh, impeccability piece. By the way, let me just tell you something else. A lot of what I'm sharing with you right now that you would do in your business, you, you should, you should put, bring that with you on a listing appointment. See, like how many homeowners are doing a frequently asked questions? Probably most not. So if you're talking to Fizbo, you show this is how some of the things that I do. I put out these flags. They're 15 feet. Have you ever seen these? The homeowners that doesn't have a 15 foot feather flag in their house that they're going to do an open house. So this, these, all of this stuff are, is good listing stuff as well. Okay, I got to go faster because I have so much to give. It create signage to highlight the best features. This is an old technique, but I love this because what's old is new again. By the way, polyester is probably coming back. <laughs> but this is one of uh, an agent. What they did is they created this like this little board of facts and figures and, and about the schools and about um, the area, et cetera. So this is cool. So they did that. Realty One Group. Here's another example. You know, schools in the area, listings that are nearby, features, stats, on the on 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 value going up, so this is all good. But here's something else you can do. Watch this. You can get these little uh, eight and a half by eleven clear holders from um, um, Amazon. 
Welcome to our open house. Uh, here's another uh, welcome to our open house. Um, you know, w- during the pandemic, we were telling people, you know, they had these signs up about the mask. Uh, you're welcome. So but here's a, this is what I want to show you. Special house feature. And, and what you do is in there, you put in, let's say it has uh, marble countertops. You have the sign. You have the sign with the with the clear thing in that and it's a marble countertop. So what you do, you ever see that in builders? They do that. They put it around the, to highlight the refrigerator, the appliances, et cetera, right? So um, special house features. So we created a whole bunch of different ones. Here's one of the power agents using the welcome uh, thing when people came into the open house. Here's another one, right? So yeah, okay. Preparation. Now let's talk about food. If you are going to do food based on the format, right? So some properties are in the multi-million. This would be appropriate to have it catered. You can reach out to a catering place and say, hey, listen, donate it or give me a discount and I'll, I'll promote you. Um, if you want to have a server, they hand out business cards. So you can really do a nice spread uh, or you can do an evening thing. Uh, continue on the preparation. Deep clean in the house. Now, this has become less of a concern, but there are still some people that are concerned uh, about a whole bunch of people coming through their house. So tell them you'll arrange to have a deep clean after the open house. Create a property brochure flyer with the rooms label. Now, the gang, this is really important. Listen to me. Uh, I'm telling you. So I know that your MLS, uh, some of your MLS is when you upload photos, it'll label the, the photo um, in... in um, uh, uh, in the MLS, but that does, that labeling doesn't get carried over to Zillow and realtor.com. The only way a room label will get carried over is if you label the room in the photo. So you actually take the photo and edit the photo and put the room in. And I'm telling you, it makes a huge difference for the buyer experience because they kind of get lost in, is this bedroom upstairs or downstairs? Is this the same bedroom from a different angle? And it gets confusing. So I'm telling you, it makes a big difference labeling your photos. Um, Continuing on, have a loan office create a payment sheet for you uh, to have the open house. Here's an example of one of a, a house that if you put five down, 10 percent, 15, here's all the different uh, rates. Um, this especially is more important nowadays. You know, now we have the the buy down rates that you can do um, to help um, the buyers not have such a big shock on the interest rates. Uh, so anyway, I would definitely put together that and have a lender do that for you. Create branded value pieces. Let me show you. This is big. Um, so Christina, one of our power agents, she said, the amount of information Daryl gives is amazing. We're never at a loss. You know, power agents, I got to tell you, power because we have some new power agents on the call. Um, we have in that classroom for you, beyond just being a training company, uh, we have over 700 pieces of assets for you that you can use in your business. There is no company, forget training company, there's no company in our industry that has as many as we do. And um, this is an example of one. This is the buyer's guide. Now, one of the things that we got requested from um, power agents a lot was, hey, is there a guide for buyers uh, on how to buy a house? Well, the way we wrote this, it actually, there's a table of contents. It's almost like a book. Now, the thing, Power Agents, about everything we give you, you brand it to you. The bottom of every page should have your phone number. The back of the book should have your photo. Now, let me tell you what you do with these. Now, this is just the buyer's guide. Let me show you one other. <laughs> we have a dozen guides. So that's the buyer's guide. This over here is the seller's guide. Now, Power Agents, what I want you to do is take the guides and don't print out a whole bunch for your open house. I want you to print one seller's guide and one buyer's guide. Do it on Vistaprint or do it in-house. Bind it GBC. Put a nice clear plastic on it. Make this thing look like it's a $20 book. Okay? Then what you do is you have it at the open house. And when this is great, what I'm telling you, gang, when you're talking to a buyer and you take the buyer through, and you reference this book. Let's say it's the buyer book. You say, let me show you something. One of the things you keep this in mind when buying a house in, in this book that I give to my clients, it says to make sure you, you already have the engineer in mind that you want to work with. And here's why, yada, yada. 
Now you sh you're showing them the book. Now when they're looking at the book, they go, "Oh, that's good. Yeah, this is a great book. This got this. Would you like a copy?" And they say, "Oh yes, could I have one?" Oh yeah, I only have the one here. Why don't I do this? I know you filled in the sign-in sheet, but why don't you give me your information again? Just give me your email and your cell, so then I can send it to you both ways, and I'll, I'll make sure and put your name by there too. Now let me tell you what's just gonna happen. If they lied when they filled out that form. <laughs> When you say, do me, if I know you filled that out, but give it to me because Mary has it. Give it to me and I'll make sure I send it to you. Now you're going to get the real email, the real sell. <laughs> I love that. Okay. Some other stuff. Uh, home buying checklist. Uh, you should, you should, this is something you can give a buyer. You can create a buyer package for buyers. This is the loan application, the moving checklist for kids. You know, we're really um, passionate about children here in my company. And, um, it, we actually have our own charity, America's Hope for America's Children. And uh, for kids moving, it could be traumatic and they may not be able to articulate it, even at the youngest age. So we created some value pieces for kids to make the move easier. So whenever there's a, a buyer who has children, I highly recommend to our power agents that they, they just give this, they donate it. This one here, it, it basically goes through a plethora of ideas on how to make moving uh, like a game and an, an, a fun experience for the kids. It's really powerful. It's a great icebreaker. It's great. Uh, the buyers see that you have a heart. Um, so it's good. Okay. So uh, power agents, when you go to classroom and if you just type in the word move, do you see that? You will find the guide for the kids and some other stuff in there as well. Okay. So the new homeowner checklist, here's another thing. So just create value. People. Now, guess, guess, by the way, guess. Um, there's, your company might have some stuff. You know, or you might find some, or maybe there's another trainer or coach that you have that might have something. Um, these are the pieces that we have. The 40 things a buyer agent does to earn their commission. That's powerful. Uh, having an easy move guide for the, the, set, the buyers. Um, that's a powerful guide. And um, this one is one of my favorites. The 100. What we did is we wrote out what are the all the things an agent does for us. Now this one's for a seller, not for a buyer. But it's a value piece. You know, if you have when you're meeting the neighbors at the neighborhood open house, uh, here's, here's 184 things I do to earn my commission. And you don't pay me. You don't pay me unless I do the job. This these 184 things I do before you even pay me. Now, by the way, guest part of that. That one of the things you get today, if you want to do the, the, the trial, we're going to send you the 184 things. All right. Listen, let me check in with you guys. I'm going to go to number two. We just did number one and we got 15 minutes. I'm going to go faster. But right now, really quick in the chat, what's your favorite idea and just the preparation? Now, we talked a little bit about promotion, but what's your favorite one that you're like? I like to see you guys write it in here. So that way I can know that I'm making a difference and helping you. By the way, I know we're streaming to Facebook. Unfortunately, we can't see what's happening on Facebook only in the, the live webinar, can we? So while you guys are writing it, I'm going to go to the next one, which is promotion. Here's how you're going to promote this um, using social media. Now, one of the things you should do on social media, let me say, are some of them coming in now, Jules? Uh, yeah. cr create a board on the area. Very good, Lorna. Very good, Cheryl. Bound the buyer and seller's guide. Cheryl, that is huge, huge. Invite the neighbors for formal invite and then follow up. Mary, that's going to get you. That one there is going to get you a ton of listing appointments. The handwritten invitations, Judy said the same thing. The Everybody loves the neighborhood open house. Jennifer, the large signs. Yes, Patricia, neighborhood open. Everybody loves the neighborhood open house, Jules. All I'm right. Ready to go. So let me continue teaching. Julie, publish those for everybody. That's great. Okay. So promoting, um, one of the things you can do, uh, promote in a community Facebook group. So if you are uh, a member of a closed Facebook group, promote it in there, invite the neighbors through that group. You can also, um, all your pages and other platforms, you should be promoting your open house. Let me share with you how to do that. There's a step, uh, here's my plan for promoting it on social media. You're going to do three posts. You're going to do a, a post a few days before the open house. Don't do it too soon, okay? Because people are not going to remember. Um, so just do it a few days. Then you want to do it the day before the open house, but then the most importantly, the, the day of the open house. Now, what I suggest you do is you take your phone 
and you you do a you do a live thing and you say, hey gang, I'm here at 1010 Hana Hana Lane. I'm getting ready for the open house. And then let me just show you this wonderful house. And then you give a tour of just the first floor. Because then you're gonna say, I there's a second floor, but I'm trying to get ready here. So if you want to see the rest of it, you got come on by. So you tease them with the house, you don't show them the whole house, so then they're gonna come by. So that's a powerful technique. Okay. Uh, post it in your MLS, of course. You want to do that. Upload photos, uh, slide to the MLS with the open house information. Let me explain what this is. So let's say your, your MLS lets you post uh, 24 photos. What I want you to do is on um, photo number one, it's actually an ad of the open house with the date and the time uh, of the open house. Okay. So when people go, whether it's on Zillow, whether it's on Realtor, they'll see an ad as opposed to a photo of the house promoting your open house. Now, some MLSs may not allow that. Some do. So check your rules on that. Door knocking flyers and a market report um, certificate. So if you start knocking on doors to let people know you do know, but oh, listen, here's something else. When you do the neighborhood open house first and then you're going to do the public open house, what I want you to do is call all the neighbors when you do the public open house. Say, hey, this is Daryl Davis. I just want you to know I'm going to be back at that house that we uh, that I did for you, the neighbors, but I'm doing it for the general public. It's 10, 10, Hana, Hana. It's going to be, I, if you want to stop by, uh, I'd love to see you. If I saw you before, I'd love to see you again. Uh, but bring any, any friends that you think want to buy in the neighborhood. This house is going to go fast, okay? Part of uh, promotion gang you may not get a, a piece of business on every promotion, but the accumulation is what you're doing is you're having people know your name, face, or what you do for a living. And that's the whole point here as well. Um, so use, oh, I talked, to, I didn't think I had slide broadcasts in here. I did have it in there. You should invite all your leads, past clients. Hey, listen, if you're in the area, come on by. You should broadcast to every person you know you can. Hey, I'm doing an open house. Why? Because you're working. You're showing people you're working. And you never know. And again, it's a contact. Even if they don't come, what just happened? They heard your name. The they heard your name. You're still in real estate. How many is that time it happened? Like you, we lost business. Oh, I didn't know you were still in real estate. They hear your name. They know you're still in real estate. You're shaking the trees. Motion impacts emotion. It's good for the heart and the soul. Email your list. Promote it to your list that way. Use a raffle to boof, 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 boof. Boost, <laughs> boost attendance, and you can you can raffle off a color TV and promote that. Who's going to pay for that? The lender, who's also going to be at the open house with you. And if you don't know a lender who'll throw money at this, call me. I got a list for you. Invite other agents who have sold similar homes in the last twelve months. So if you have a a, a, a way to get the list of all the agents who have sold a similar price range. Put a call to them. Slide dial them. Slide dial fellow agents. Email your agents. For aggressively priced properties, hold all, all, all showings and offers until the open house. So if you've got a listing that's going to sell the day it comes out on MLS, put it in the MLS. We're going to hold all offers until after the open house. Um, now, let's go to number three. Number three presentation. Get there early and for heaven's sake, turn the lights on. I went to an open house with, you know what the agent did? They turned the lights off after I left every room. So they were, I had to go into a room, turn the lights on to look around. Then I left the room. The agent was behind me and turned the light back up. I swear to God, I was like, what the heck? What are you doing? Why did you do? You keep the, what is a build? You ever go into a builder's model home? Do they have it in the dark? No, as a matter of fact, they put in more bulbs in high hats than you should, that should be allowed legally. Like the house could burn up. They put so many, brightness is good. Turn the lights on. Have an open house pack and list. Be organized. Run your business like a business. You know, I have a Bluetooth speaker, validation pieces, extra masks if you're concerned just about that. Some people still are. Scented candles. That's a, that's a, up, you know, some people say, yeah, but some people don't like the smell. Eh, you probably don't like those people anyway. So it's good. Make it look smell good. Uh, a US dry, USB drive. Let me show you the USB drive. This is awesome. Now, what I want you to do is get a USB drive of your listing. And you can find them. Uh, you, you just do a uh, key USB flash drive. You see there's a Remax logo in this. The, anyway, but watch this. What you do 
is you create a QR code. We use this company called QR Code Generator. And you put on the drive um, the flyer, the promotional stuff about the house, maybe a picture of your QR code. And here's, here's, here's what I, I want you to do. Actually, let me show you the script. Watch this. Open house intro video script. Hi, my name is Daryl Davis. You're about to watch a video of one of our top listings that I want. Wanted to take a moment to thank you for your time. If you're interested in this listing or any other properties for sale, please keep in mind that one of the benefits of being in and, uh, in and out of homes every day is that I'm, I'm very aware of additional features of listings that may not be depicted in, in a way that it would justify the online photo. Anyway, so I wrote this script to do a video intro that you take your phone, lean it up against a bottle of water or something, I don't care, and do, do the intro to a video or flyers or anything about that listing. So when you have buyers come, you're going to give them this jump drive, which has all the info about the house, you see. But when they put it in, there's going to be a, a video of you thanking them for looking at this house and coming to your open house, but you'll do a generic recording so that way you record it once and you can do it on every one of your listings. Now they have a little promotional piece of you with the listing. Awesome. Okay. Let's continue on. Uh, stream your open house in a neighborhood closed Facebook group. So right now, like for example, we're streaming. I hope, I don't know if the technology worked today, but we should be streaming this to one of our groups, our training groups. So what you could do is have another agent stream the open house to the farm area um, if, you, if you have admin rights to that group. So there's another idea. Okay. Um, so presentation, you have two people manage the open house. Let me tell you why I want you to do the open house with two people. You see this? This is a great photo. Uh, now, this was in the heat of the pandemic. That's why everybody had their masks on. But the reason why I'm showing this photo is because this is the one thing I, I hope we keep doing after after the pandemic, after everybody's like, well, it's after now, but who knows? <laughs> God forbid. Anyway, this is something we should do all the time now, meaning instead of just opening the doors and letting like five, six people in the house at the same time and worried if something's getting stolen, you can't talk to everybody the whole nine yards. This is what all successful open houses are doing now. You keep people waiting outside. You have two agents. One agent's inside showing the property. The outside agent is greeting, meeting and greeting. Now, that one agent that's inside, they just give a tour, bada bing. They, they, they build some rapport. They tease them with the buyer's guide. They get the real information. The other person, what they're doing is they're going to each person with a clipboard. This is a group sign-in sheet, right, that has information about what are you looking for and how long you've been looking, data. But this is my favorite one is this one. It's a single sign-in sheet per person on a clipboard. And what happens is the outside person takes the clipboard and they go to, they have like, you have three or four clipboards and you go to the first three or four people and you say, do me a favor, fill this out. There's a psychology. If they don't fill this out, they're not getting into the house. So there's more likelihood with them waiting outside that they're going to fill it out honestly. And you're going to get really good leads doing it that way. Second thing is it creates a sense of urgency. Number three, buyers want what other buyers want. When they see the line, they get crazy. Let me go back. There's another reason why you do this. Watch this. You see this? Who else is looking at this? The neighbors. They're looking out the windows and say, what the hell's going on over at 1010 Hunter Hunter Lane? This is great promotion for you on the block. This, this, this is the only way how you should be doing open houses now. Okay. Um, <laughs> look at the cat. Is that cute, that little kid? Make sure the sellers put the pets away. I love pets. I'm, I'm embarrassed to say how many pets I got. Put them away. Because get them somewhere. Lock them up. Remove vehicles from the driveway. Um, think like builder staging, all the lights on. We said this, no, well, this says no smelly spray. I like smelly spray music, have some music, uh, remove personal photos, get those out. Um, fine China, put them out. Nice bedding, right? This is the f house that we uh, bring the family over. Stock the fridge on vacant properties. If you're in the heat somewhere the, in some parts of the country, fill it up with water bottles. Um, Put your phone away. Don't meet and greet people. Don't. I had that happen. People, they were actually on their phone trying to do business when they should be focusing on 
what, what their job of meeting and greeting. So put your phone away, have one neighborhood report to encourage people to request it, which we talked about. Um, now this is this, no, no, I'm sorry. That, that was a neighborhood market report. So the first report was the buyer, uh, buyer guide. And then there's a seller's guide. This is doing a report of the neighborhood and same thing. You only print out one. You don't give it to them. You tell them you'll email it to them. You tease them with it. RPR is a great company. We recommend RPR is an incredible, it's part of being a realtor and it's free. Uh, Power Age, if you, if you go to webinar and demand and you look, you'll see RPR. We did a recording with them. Now, let me let me go through pre being safe. Um, if you're doing it with somebody else, that's great. So you probably don't need this. But, you know, having having one of those emergency things, whether it's on your your iPhone will do it too, or your iWatch will do it as well. So make sure you're just being safe when you're doing these open houses. Make uh, make believe you're being recorded. Recorded because you very well may be the homeowner may have have uh, have you know so so be careful what you say and how you behave. Hire a drone company to fly a banner in the neighborhood. I want you to imagine when you're doing your open house, this is what you have: a banner and a drone going down the street. Come on now, tell me that's not the that's not out of the box thinking. You bring that not just down the street, the whole neighbor go down street by street, bing, 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 like this. Come on, you're gonna get a ton of people coming to what the who is this agent? I I got to meet this agent that has the chutzpah to do this. Okay. Ask discovery questions when you're meeting with the buyer. In other words, when you're talking through, when you are showing the buyer the property, you want to get clear on, you know, who they are, what they're doing, uh, what they're committed to, what their time frame is. You, you know this. Now, post open house, our last thing, and then I'm going to give you guys a bonus and, 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 and answer questions. Send a text if the house didn't work, uh, you have others that might be of interest. So actually what you should do, and whether the house works for them or not, it's a good idea to send a text to the buyers. Now, we have a whole bunch of texts. This is just one text. Uh, Hi, thanks for stopping by Sunday. I wanted to check and ask if you have any questions about the property. Also, I thought I'd share some other similar properties in the area. So that's one text. Here's another text. Great to meet you at 1010 Hana Hana last weekend. I hope you got a good feel for the house. Uh, uh, we had an overwhelming interest, many who attended, and we're going to be hearing offers Tuesday. If you're interested in offers, let me know. Anyway, we have more texts. So that's an example. If you've got, we had one power agent on our coaching call this past Monday. She said she got a hundred uh, buyers to her open house because of what we're talking about. So she said, Daryl, I can't possibly call all hundred buyers. And I said, you don't have to. What you do is you send a text to all hundred. And, and then they'll, those texts will have them respond to you. Now, out of 100, maybe only 20 respond. Those are the 20 you focus on. The other 80, you keep them in your CRM. Power agents, those texts, when you go to buyers um, and then you go to text, prospecting text, you'll see the text there. there it's in a Word document, so you can copy and paste it. Um, uh, so send the text. Use multiple offer spreadsheet if necessary. Um, you know, in this day and age, if you've got multiple offers, one of the things that you should do is have some kind of way to communicate those offers. Like Power Agents, we created a spreadsheet for you that you can lay it out. If you're the listing agent, you can lay out to the homeowner, here's offer one, here's offer two, and you can compare when the inspection is, the, the all that stuff, okay? So, all right. Now, let's see. We are coming to the end. Oh, I, I, there is one other thing. Follow-up calls. Make sure you do follow-up calls to as many as you can. Um, now, I'm not going to go through the whole dialogue here. You guys are going to get a copy of this whole thing, the guests, if you become power agent. But the reason why I'm calling is a thank you for stopping by the open house the other day. This house, if you remember it, it was a four-bedroom, two-bath. Da, 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 da. Let me ask you, is that the style and price range you're looking in? Um, uh, and then from that point forward, you just start asking questions, and then you try and schedule appointment. In my office, we have called a six-step buying process, and I'd like to come go over that with you. And anyway, schedule an appointment. The, the, the last thing, my favorite thing is when, if for those of you have buyer agents that are buyer agents agreement with your buyers, make sure you give them something like this. And what this is, it's like a certificate. So if you've got your buyer that hired you, so you have a buyer agents agreement, you give every one of your buyers say, listen, if you want to go to open houses, you can go. 
but you need to give this sheet to the listing agent to let them know that you're being represented by me. And if, if I have any questions, I'll call them or if they, if they have anything they want to tell us, they can call me. So now you've got your buyers going to open houses. It's kind of like when, 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 uh, when somebody is married in their bar and they're getting hit on, they go, no, I'm, t I'm taken. So this is, this is like the wedding ring, the buyer thing. Stay away. I got an agent. All right. So we're going to go to questions, but they get, I got something for the guests. So guests, I want to give you something and, and maybe uh, Sarah, we're going to put up that, that thing again for them. So if you want to try this power agent program for $5, uh, and I'll tell you what the program is. Part of what you're going to get is a copy of the slides. And, and I'm going to tell you, let me just tell you something. Um, this program is perhaps for what you're going to get for five bucks is going to blow your mind. One of them is every Monday I do a coaching call that's live where I can talk to you. You can ask me questions. It's a group call. We record the call and put it on the website for power agents to listen to afterwards. You know, one of our power agents, Lori, she said the coaching calls are great because it starts the week. And, and we call them Mindset Mondays for that reason is to, you know, set your, 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 uh, your head in the right place. And uh, I have a motivational moment I do, which I work on all week. And I got I just wrote a new one before this webinar. I'm excited to share with the group next Monday. Um, Talent Tuesday and Brainstorm Thursday. These happen on, uh, on, on a regular basis, pretty much, where we will either interview a top agent um, or an industry expert or somebody that we think is going to be of value to the power agents. We record those. We distribute to them. In addition, the brainstorm, that's my favorite. We do these every 60 days where power agents do a show and tell, and they share what they're doing in their business now. We take all of those ideas, and we put it into a guide with hyperlinks. This is just one of the, one of the sessions. Each session comes up with 60, 70, 80 ideas. It is phenomenal. Um, then we have all of our training on demand. Like this is being recorded. Power agents have access to it. But you go into the classroom, you say, I need help with self-promotion or farming or buyers or FISBOs. And then we give you, the power agents get the slides. You don't get a PDF of my slides. You actually get the PowerPoint slides. And the reason why that's important is because now you can customize the heck out of it. You have total control and do with it whatever you want. Michelle, one of our power agents, said the weekly coaching calls on uh, Monday and the Wednesday webinars is so worth what the price of the program is. Um, after the $5 trial, I'll explain that uh, to you in just a minute. Uh, this slide has to be changed. Uh, we now have over 700, not 600. Mark. We keep creating new content because I have a very creative group of uh, team members, and my power agents will tell you, power agents, shout out. To the to the team, if they do, you like our support team. The, we call them the Smile Squad. You, you know, when you become a power agent, you have my entire company committed to your success. And sometimes power agents say, "Daryl, do you guys have this letter or this flyer?" And if I think it's a great idea, <clears throat> bada bing, we'll create it. So, <laughs> so we get a little carried away. Um, I'm sorry. This is he oh Heidi says the newsletters. The newsletters are worth it. So we have uh, 12 months of newsletters that we change uh, every year. And that's just one of the things that we have. So it's crazy. Um, it, it, the classroom is where all the magic is. When you go to the classroom and you type in, um, uh, let's say you need help with farming or self-promotion, you go to that tab and you will see a plethora of things that you can use and customize. We have similar search function as... Um, as um, Google. So if let's say you type in the word FISBO in the search thing, everything FISBO related shows up, whether it's a flyer or promotional piece or a marketing piece or dialogue. So let me ask you a question before I tell you the price, because I know some of you want to know what it is after the $5 trial. If you had one extra sale that got generated because you're a power agent and the training and the coaching, you know, uh, what would that be worth? Because uh, I don't know what your commission is, right? But I'm even the lowest com commission in the country at 397. It's a no brainer. You know, you probably make at least 10 times back your money, um, but we don't charge 397. 297, it would be, it, it, that would be the lowest coaching of any program in our industry. 397, we found, we haven't found anything below 397. So 297 would definitely be great, but we don't even charge that. As a matter of fact, we don't even charge the 197. 
It's only $47 a month as of now. We are going to be raising the price. And um, so there's that. So um, I just so forget about the 197. It's 47. You cancel any time. You get to try it for five dollars for 30 days. You have complete access, and there's you get all the bonuses, and there's no con there's no long term anything. So you can cancel any time. So we will email you all of this uh, when you click on that. Now we're going to answer questions. I know some of you have questions, but one one question I do want to address, and the questions could be. Uh, you know, for the for the content today or the power program. So we're going to keep training. I just noticed a little glitch in my slide here, but the, the font color is a little wackadoo. But here's the point. What this is saying is if you think about the things that we spend $5 on, um, you know, the thing that they all have in common is that when you actually consume it, it's over. But with the power program, you're actually investing in yourself. So I will say this, the last thing I'll say on this, if, if you got any value in our time together here and it's just been a little over an hour, well, imagine what 30 days might do for your business. And, uh, and, I, and, and I'm also encouraging you, the guests, to not think about or decide about $47. Um, think It's because it's not. It's $5. That's all you have to decide. So is it worth the risk $5 to get to know us, to learn about us, to get access to everything unrestricted, kick the tires for a whole entire month, and anything that you download, anything we email you, you get to keep as our gift to you. I mean, that sounds like a really low, low, low risk. As a matter of fact, I'd say you're not even risking anything. But don't get in your way. So I would suggest you take this opportunity because we are going to be raising the price. When we raise the price, anybody uh, that's in at the price that they're in, they stay that price. They're grandfathered in. We never raise prices on our current paying members. So, um, all right, Julie, let's go to questions uh, and see what we got, okay? Awesome, so, so a big one. Is this being recorded? <laughs> Yes, yeah. this is this has been recorded. And by the way, Power Agents, I would love your comments too. Um, you guys are always great to do that, to share your feelings about the program with the guests. So that would be great if you want to do that, Power Agents. Um, and, um, you know, with some of the, the greatest testimonials we got is a Power Agent said, you know what, I was thinking about trying it for $5, but I was concerned, but I did it. And anyway, so those are really great. Um, yes, it's being recorded and we will email you the recording. And for Power Agents, where the recording will be, will be in your classroom. So if I go to um, the classroom and then I go to webinars on demand, it's um, where is a classroom? It's thinking. And, uh, oh, I just went to calendar. How did that happen? Hang on one second. So if you go to classroom, uh, first of all, it'll be here, Daryl's top picks. So today's training, it, um, the slides are already there for you, Power Agents, and Daryl's top picks. And as far as the video, after we finish editing it and stuff, it'll be on the webinars on demand. When you go there, there's, again, a link to today's slides. But it's going to fill this spot here. So these are all the trainings that we do each week, and that's where it gets posted. I just saw a glitch here with this, uh, Julie, is okay. missing an image. Okay, next question. Uh, can the promotional pieces be branded to the agent? In other words, is it customizable? Yes. So when you go to um, – I'll give you an example of one. So if I go to uh, – Pros, let me go to farming because that's where there's a lot of marketing material in there. And um, let me pick, um, well, first of all, I haven't said this in a while. I don't know why I forgot. The, we have a Spanish version of everything as well. So anybody where that's important, we have it written for you. But let's go to the English version on this postcard. So actually, I should do the newsletter. Um, but let me have this finished loading and because uh, there it is. So um, this is a postcard that you might send to your past clients because it's their birthday. And, um, so what you'll see here is you can pick up your free cake at Hana Hana <laughs> bakery and uh, see how I just did that. And, um, also if I want to put my, my promotional photo at the bottom, I can do that. Let me show you something else uh, while Julie asks the next question. I'm going to just close this and get ready um, for the other thing I want to show you. Go ahead, Julie. What's the next question? Awesome. Angela asked early on, I have relisted a home coming back on to the market. Any new ideas to try? I want the whole neighborhood there. 
Yeah, what I would do, I, I think we covered that, right? So um, I think that question came in maybe before I, I got into the content. So yes. yeah, so just do what everything I- Everything he uh, talked about today. <laughs> yeah, everything I talked about today, use that. Uh, I want to show you the newsletter. So I'll just show you the March newsletter. It'll take time for it to download because we use really high-end quality um, images. And so it's because of that, the files are really big and they take a little bit of a while for it to load. Um, but what I'm going to show you right now is something really magical. This is the, the newsletter for March. Now it says eight tips to make uh, the winter to spring transition easy. Now, first of all, this here has uh, eight items. Let's say you don't like the eight and you want to uh, get rid of number eight. I'm going to just delete that. And bada bing, now I only have seven. And then over here is where you can put your photo. So this is how easy you can customize this because we use PowerPoint. But here's the other magical thing I want to show you. Eight tips. I just made it seven because I deleted that one. I'm going to um, copy this text. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to uh, Facebook. Um, actually, I'll show you how to go to Facebook. I will go to, um, is it the dashboard? And then I go to the Facebook closed group. I'm now going to make believe I'm going to my personal page, but this is the Facebook closed group. Um, actually, we're streaming right now to, uh, to another group. But um, okay, so if I go like this and I paste, there is the seven tips that I just copied uh, over from that PowerPoint. Um, and let me go back to the PowerPoint because I want to get that heading. So I'm going to copy the heading and go back to um, uh, uh, Facebook and I'm going to give it the heading. Now, here's what I just did. I created a blog article and uh, which, by the way, if I wanted to, I can actually uh, post this on my own personal blog. So now I just took that newsletter. I created a blog article. I can create it on my own personal blog. So these newsletters, and that's just from the one piece is my point. So, um, okay, Julie, let's go back to the question. Awesome. Maureen just signed up. Congratulations. So for those of you just signing up, give it a, a couple minutes for the email to come through. And do check your spam filter. Sometimes it gets stuck in there. So just letting you know. Um, Thomas asked, is it okay to use slide dial with the follow-up dialogue that you showed? Uh, yes. I, I The thing about the slide dial, the real magic with the slide dial is to record it as if you really did dial that individual and uh, you miss them. So you obviously can't say their name. But um, but you want to make it like, hey, this is Daryl Davis. I'm sorry I missed you. The uh, reason why I was calling is we met at the 1010 Hana Hana Lane. So, yes, to answer your question, you can use the dialogue that I gave you and use it on a slide dial. Sure. I love it. Yeah. Thomas uh, says, I learned more in a month here than a year with other coaching programs. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you, Thomas. Appreciate that. That was uh, that's thank you. <laughs> Uh, any advice on an open house for a property that's just been reduced several times? Mm. Um, not really. I, I, I think you would do everything. Being that I, I'll bet that you haven't done most of what I taught today. I think if you do what I taught you today, along with that price reduction, uh, I think it, it'll help you tremendously. I do want to say about some about price reductions that we make mistakes in our industry, which is we do this silly thing, which is like four ninety nine, for example, on a house four ninety nine nine. The reason why that's unfortunate and I think a huge mistake is because you're going to get less showings and less viewings when you do that. Because when people search for listings on Zillow or Realtor.com, even Realtors, when we search, when was the last time you wrote in a search? Show me all the houses from four seventy five to 499. What do you type in? You type 475 to 500. And, and if you have a buyer that wants to buy something low 500s, what do you type? 500 to five and a quarter. So that house that's listed at 499 is not going to show up on that second search. So I'm a big proponent of stop doing that 99 thing. People are too educated, too smart. All that does. See, that worked back in the day before the internet was invented and Macy's always had sales. This is <laughs> not that. So, so please do yourself and your client a favor is round your stuff up to how we search 
for listings. Next question. Love it. In a neighborhood open house, would you suggest printing out the neighborhood market report certificate um, and have a way to capture their emails so you can reconnect with those neighbors? Yes, there is so much. So here's the thing. There is so much stuff. I told you about the, the certificate, the, um, the guides. There's so much that you can tease a buyer. The point is give out something sparingly, but have the real value piece. Hold that back. That's how you get the real contact information from people. That's why you do it. So yeah, do for the neighborhood open for the neighbor open house. Same thing. You can have that certificate. That one I would give them. Um, yeah. So good idea. Next question, Julie. I love it. What is the price for um, previous power agents who want to rejoin? It's 47. So if you are, so here's what happens. If you were a power agent at a different price at a lower price, but you left and you come back, you come at the new price. That's why you don't want to leave. <laughs> but, uh, but if you come in at this price, we are upping it again this year because honestly, uh, folks, what we do, uh, and, and I, I would love my power agents to tell me, my current power agents, if you wouldn't mind writing, we'll do a survey. What do you think the program is worth a month? Um, I like to think it's a lot more than 47, uh, more like in the three three <laughs> digits. And um, but if, But you lock in today, you're locked in. So when we do raise it, You'll, you'll get that benefit. Melody says, I've been a realtor for 29 years. Becoming a power agent has made a huge difference in the way I approach my business. And I can confirm that the price um, that I joined at has always stayed the same. Thank you, Melody, for, for sharing. Thank you, Melody. Appreciate that. Thank you. I love it. Uh, can I customize a new... <laughs> uh, those of you guys si signing up, give us a shout out in the Q&A so we can give you a shout out. Yeah, I Julie likes... She likes me to press this button, Julie. So I, I do. I like the clapping button. Uh, Thomas says, can I customize a newsletter and send it to homeowners? Yes. Absolutely. Yep. You can, everything that, everything that we have, like even, even my slides today, watch this. Like if you decided you wanted to uh, teach my seminar, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> You're going to get this slide deck. Just look at this. Watch, watch. Look, this is, you don't like the post that it in your, uh, look, I just deleted that one. So this is, this is how you see, look at that. You, the, the, we create everything in two platforms, Microsoft PowerPoint and Microsoft word. And the reason why is because those two, if you're a Mac user or you use something else, it, it, Linux, you can still use this stuff and you don't have to learn or buy a new software because every computer, everybody should have PowerPoint and Word. Everybody should have Microsoft Office. And, and, and if you don't, I think their online version is like 10 bucks a month. And that gives you other softwares as well. Next question, Julie. I love it. Uh, Cheryl just signed up. Yay, Cheryl. Yeah. Alicia says X99 at least. So everybody's saying how much it's worth. The Paul says it's crazy that the team offers so much knowledge and information for the price they do. Sign up now. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Uh, Cindy Thornton just signed up. Looking forward to getting in and learning new things. Congratulations. Okay. I, I, I do think that probably what we're going to do is we're going to raise the price gradually because we're going to test the market. But I think our next price is going to be 197 because we really should be in the two three hundred dollar range for what we give and, and the power agents will tell you that but <laughs> all of our current power agents they're in at 40 so some are even less they've been power agents for like seven ten years so um okay next question norman says it's worth a lot more especially being a new agent thank you norman um, part, i'm gonna say something too just one last thing about the price one of the reasons why we kept the price as low as we did is because during the pandemic we were like we, we, my company was really frantic just to make sure uh, agents were okay. So we were like these weekly trainings we did, and now we can't take them away. We made it available to even non-power agents because we wanted just help people through the pandemic. So, but we've set the standard now, so we can't take stuff back, but now it's time for us to raise the price. So, okay. Next question. Joe, there's so much here. Um, how do I keep from being overwhelmed? Oh, that's a great question. So here's, here's how that works as far as 
the, how, how you should look at the power program and what we do is do not look at it as a training program where you have, it's not a training program. It's, it's, um, it's more like, um, a Brazilian steakhouse. When you go to Brazilian steakhouse, you don't eat everything. Now, at first, what you may do is you may try almost not even you won't even try everything like because you got the, 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 the food bar plus the different meats coming. So you already have an idea of what you need or what you like. And then you might try a few other things. And and when you're done eating, what do you do with that card on the on the table? You flip it over and you say, I'm done eating. I'm ready for more. So the power program is like that. We have more meat more side stuff, more stuff that you could ever eat. And if you try to, you just get overwhelmed. Uh, like your stomach becomes overwhelmed, mentally you become overwhelmed. So we tell you to use the program based on what you need at the time. So for example, let me get out of this. I'm going to show you. So let's say you know you need to have a breakthrough in prospecting. I don't know why I keep doing this. I keep clicking. Am I clicking on the wrong thing, Julie? I just have to check. Why does that keep happening? Oh, I keep clicking on calendar. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> so if you go to the classroom and let's say you need help with uh, prospecting FISBOs and expireds, which is my strength, right? So you go to prospecting and say, all right, I need to see Daryl's script when it comes to uh, calling FISBOs. So well, first of all, you it's alphabetical, and so we use the word dialogue. We don't use the word script. We're not a fan of scripts, uh, but dialogue is okay. Uh, cold calling dialogue, expired dialogue, voicemail. So where's the FISBO? Um, it's alphabetical, farming, for rent by owners. There's the FISBO dialogue, bada bing. So now, now, by the way, look at how many pages is in prospecting. So you don't go through all this. You just can. You over time. This program is not a month program. This is a career program. This is something to be with you your whole entire career. Just like you have, listen, you're paying your MLS duels, you use your MLS, but there's other things that you're paying in your dues that you don't use, but you have access to. A lot of us have Netflix. We don't use Netflix every day, but it's there for us when we went to, want to use it. The power program is the same way. It's like your Netflix subscription. When you need a, a dose of Daryl, you come here. You need help with something. You come on the come Monday coaching call and take yourself off mute. And you say, hey, Daryl, I have a question. I just did this FISBO and they said this. What should I have said? So this is a game changing program, but it's not a quick fix program. It's a support system for you to help you stay focused and design a career worth smiling about. Next question, Julie. And the search bar is your best friend. So whatever you're looking for, you come in via, oh, I want FISBO information or just like you did earlier. I, I need open house information. Put that in everything will pop up for you. So then you can pick and choose like the smorgasbord. And speaking so of I dialogue, just typed, Watch this. I just typed in FISBO and there's the FISBO dialogue. Uh, old FISBOs are people that were trying to sell like, let's say a year ago. Uh, then there's FISBO letters. There's five pages of FISBO content. Um, now, one of, the, one of the things that, let me just go back to that for a second. There, there's FISBOs. No FISBO should be a FISBO. This is a video I did where I got really passionate in a live audience saying why a FISBO is the worst thing for them. You know, you watch that video, that'll get you pumped before you make your calls. By the way, there's this other feature here, which is the favorite feature. You know, for sale by owner uh, rules uh, here, let's say this letter, letter FISBO number one. I love that letter. I'm going to click on the favorite star. And now I'm going to go to uh, my favorite folder. So if I go back to classroom and I find my favorite folder and it says favorites, Everything that you give a star to goes into this. For this is your folder, so every folder is different. Because so when you log in, you have your own training folder, and there's the letter I just clicked on. So that way you can take these 700 pieces and star this, star that, star that, and bring it down to your favorite pieces. And once you've used it or you looked at it further and you say, you know what, it's not as great as I thought it would be. I don't like it anymore. Then you unclick that star, and then it'll come out of your folder. Okay. I love Next it. question, Julie. Robert Bruce is 30 years in the business. I need to get back to the basics. I just signed up. Congratulations. Great job. Great job. Uh, Marsha just signed up. Joe just signed up. Okay. Awesome, uh, I'll, awesome. just, I'll just give them all applause at once. <laughs> I think I was just going to get any more you want to tell me? I, I love, well, Tasha just signed up as well. She said, thanks a million. <laughs> okay. Anybody else? 
I'll, I'll check through, but no. <laughs> okay, you'll check through. All right, so try. All right, next um, question. Matt says, when you promote on social media, do you personally give out the address and or price, or do you ask people to message you for more information so you know where your traffic is coming from? Yeah, I, I would. I don't care where the traffic's coming from. I don't care. Not in this case. Not for an open house. All I care is fill the room up, fill the house up, or get a lot of people. So if, if everything that you do, um, which is a speed bump, it slows down the real purpose of what you're trying to accomplish. I, I don't have them text you, man. Just say, "Here's the address. Comes here. I am. Come, everybody, come," because it's the top of the funnel. The top of the funnel. You want a hundred people come to your open house. You'll you'll weed it out later. And who the heck cares if they came in on an ad or a postcard if you're going to sell them a house and get make it thirty thousand dollar commission and do your job for your sellers. So don't, don't, let me, let me, I'm going to give you a motivation moment right now, really quick for everybody. You know, when you're driving a car and uh, let's say you're going 40 miles an hour and you hit a speed, you're in, in a gated area and they have a speed bump. It, what happens is the speed bump, when you hit it, it takes the energy out of the car tires and, and it absorbs it. Like you can actually see it on a heat map. So what happens is 40 mile an hour car drops down to 20. Now for you to regain the speed, you, what do you got to do is press on the gas. You press on the gas, the pedal calls the gas tank, give me some more gas. Now, eventually the gas tank goes empty. This is our careers. See, so we start off our career saying, you know what? I got a full tank of gas. I'm all juiced up. I'm ready to hit it. I'm ready to rock and roll. And then all of a sudden we have these speed bumps in our life. We have problems at home or we have problems with another agent or a deal you thought fell through. And all of this sucks the energy out of you. Like a speed bump sucks the energy out of a car. Now, you, don't, you want to remove the speed bumps in your life because it robs your joy and it makes you less effective. This is one of those speed bumps. When somebody, don't, don't put a speed bump up for your open house. Let the whole f world know this date, this time, be there, be square. That's it. Promote the heck out of it. Don't make it so complicated. Anyway, that's my talk on that. Next question. I love it. Uh, Angela asks, is it okay to say no to a buyer who says, um, I have an agent, but still wants a copy of your buyer's guide? Um, yeah, I, I, I unfortunately, ma'am, uh, I would need to, um, if you already have an agent, I can't, there's an ethical and legal thing. I can't interfere with that relationship. Ask your agent if they have one and they can get it to you. They probably don't because I have a lot more for my clients but um, than normal. But, um, you know, ask them if they have one or, or if they can reach out to me and, if, and, and I'll see what I can do. Okay. Awesome. Love it when you come up with verbiage on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> that's Julie. Just so you all know, that's Julie's fun time when you all ask me a question and, and to see me come up with something on the spot. She gets tickled. Every them. Monday, every Monday, somebody gets you, you role play with agents. What, what time um, for the coaching calls, by the way? Yeah, so the coaching calls on Monday are 11 o'clock Eastern time. As I said, they go um, at least two hours, you know, at, but at the hour mark, I give a motivational message to set the tone for the week for you guys to focus on something. So, And if you can't stay, it's, it's, one, it's like one of those, those trains. You can hop on and hop off or, you know, the tour buses. You can hop on and hop off if you need. And you can ask your question in advance. Um, and we'll take those those at the top of the hour. We also record every coaching call. Um, you can either watch that. We live stream it to Facebook so you can watch the video or you can go to the classroom and you can uh, listen in. Now, Julie, that was a good analogy about like the New York City buses, the tour buses they have. You can get on and get off. And then the next bus you get back on. That's good. You like that? I've been hanging around like you too long, I'm man. I'm impressed with you. <laughs> So, like so that's a great analogy. So you don't have to be on the coaching call for two and a half hours. You, most power agents know I'm going to be on for that long. So they may come on an hour later uh, or just the first 15 minutes. So anyway. And Go then, ahead. Uh, when you mentioned sending a text to 100 people, is there an automated way or app to do that? so that it looks like it's going to each individual and not a group text? Yes. Very good question. There is. Um, 
there's a few companies out there, but the, we go back to that slide dial. They have a parent company. I think it's called slide text or something. It's same concept where you can send out uh, a group text, but it'll look individual to people. And um, that's what we recommend. I love it. Um, Teresa says, I'm not sure if you covered this, but do you have a program where you can give one price uh, for a managing broker to provide to all of their agents or do agents just sign up individually? Oh, Teresa. Yeah, we do. It's called a broker block. And, um, um, so Teresa, what I recommend that you do is if you write in the Q and a, your phone number right now, we won't publish it. Uh, cause we can, we, we can, we, whenever, there, when you write something in the Q and a, it doesn't get published. We read it first and then we publish it. So you can give us your phone number right now. We won't publish it. But uh, Gail from my company, she'll contact you and explain the price levels for a broker block. Do you want to show them how to find the chat on the site as well? And that oh, we have okay. our phone numbers available on the site? Yeah. And Teresa, if you don't want to do that, if you want to go right to our website, there's another way to do that as well. Um, but maybe we have your information. So, Julie, maybe if you can copy sure. Teresa's name and so we can take care of her. Um, if you Let me show you the website, gang. So... You see on our website here, there's this little chit chat thing there. I am not a fan of these things, these chit chat things or, or, or opening a ticket for a question. It ticks me off. <laughs> so let me tell you how we work at my company. First of all, we do have an a, we have a phone number at the upper left hand corner you can call. But honestly, we do have a voicemail tree because my team is they're always working. So they don't answer the phone. They let things go to the voicemail. They listen to it. They return the call back. But it could take a little time for that. What's quicker is if you go to that, that chat thing that I've got on the screen and you just type in, I have a question about yada, yada. What happens is everybody's computer in my company, the doorbell rings, like somebody's at the front door, ding dong. And then we all read the chat and whoever we think is the best person to handle that question, that person takes over the conversation. So if you had, like if you're a, a past power agent, you want to rejoin, like that's something Gail's going to do or Shelly. So they'll start talking to you. And then but let's say you don't want to do that. Just tell them, could you call me? Here's my cell. And they'll just call you. So that will do right away. So um, you'll notice, I don't know if you read it there. It says, send us a message. We typically reply in under a minute. Now that's not BS. The company that grades us on how quick we are with our chat is Intercom. You see it at the bottom of the chat says powered by Intercom. So that's how quick we respond to you in less than a minute. So how's that? That's pretty good. That's Next good. question, Julie. Uh, Brian just signed up from Myrtle Beach. Welcome, Brian. Con welcome, Brian. Congratulations. Uh, David says, in a 10 to 4 open house, what hours would be the neighbor's portion? Oh, we've had this earlier, too. Should they have it on the same day, the neighborhood open house? and the? No, 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 no. The neighbor, no, no, no. The neighborhood open house. Okay, let me, great questions. Neighborhood open house should be on a separate day. That's number one. Number two is you do not advertise it at all. It's only through the wedding invitation. You've got to be real specific on that. And the reason why, and you can, and by the way, you can call too. If you put it on social media, then it's going to, it may get out to the non neighbors. Like buyers will come. You don't want buyers. You want homeowners, homeowners, homeowners who own a home in the neighborhood. That's it. So to control that, you're going to mail it, you mail it to 50, and you slide dial to, the, to those 50. That's it. Now, you do that. You should do it on a weekend when people are available, right? So if you do it during the week, you'd have to do it maybe at night, you know, 6 to 8 or something. But it's important the homeowner not be home because you don't want them home. Because that's what you're telling people, because that's what will have people come because, oh, they're not going to be home. I can look around their stuff and see what the house looks like, you know. So uh, you're having people. Come. Now, what do you tell the homeowner? Why are you doing this? Because they're going to be like, they're just nosy. They just want to see how I live. I say, no, Mrs. Hunter, Hunter, this is why we want to do this. The types of buyers that will spend the highest price, the best buyer on any home is when they have an emotional connection to the neighborhood. There's no buyer that has more of an emotional connection to the neighborhood than a buyer who knows a neighbor, like a friend or a family member. So the best thing that we can have is your neighbors come in and they know of somebody personally 
and tell them about your house, that person's going to pay top dollar. That's why we do this. Now, I'm going to manage it. I'm going to be here. It's going to be fine. Anyway, but I need you to not be here because I need them to give me honest feedback. Okay. Anyway, so that's that's it on that. I think I answered that, right? I love it. Uh, Thomas says, what designation can power agents use to show homeowners that we are part of the power program? Okay, that's a great question. So, so a couple of things. Power agent is a registered trademark, just like realtor is, right? So I don't like that ad, realtor. Realtor. So a realtor, uh, you can't use that unless you are. Power agent is the same way. Now, if you go to power agent purpose, in power agent purpose, it will tell you what is a power agent, the logo, how it came about. Here's a sample signature. Let me show you something you all should do with the power agents. Let me go to my Gmail, if this is a good example. So I have a signature in my emails. And so if I'm going to compose an email, there's my signature. Now, jeez, oh, I just lost it. Here it is. <laughs> Hang on. This is what it's like to do live. So, um, P.S., let me know if there's anything I or my company can do to put a smile on your face. Now, this says CSP, and then here it says the CSP designation conferred by the National Speaker Association, the International Federation of Professional Speakers, is a speaking professional international measure of professional platform skills. It is held by less than 2% of all speakers worldwide. So I have a designation that less than 2% of all speakers in the entire world has. That's what CSP is. And that's my signature. Now, what power agents should have in their signature of their email is that, you know, your name, Daryl Davis, comma, power agent. With the registered trademark, you got to use that little R so no one else can use it. You say a power agent is a member of an exclusive group of dedicated professionals, less than 1% of all agents across North America, committed to helping buyers and sellers get to their next level in life. Now, in addition to that, you get a certificate to use on a listing appointment. Now, we're going to mail you one power agents after a couple of months after the trial, but you can download it here when you, you can download it. Now, if you cancel, the down, if you cancel during the trial, you, once you cancel, you can't, be, you can't use power agent anymore. Uh, here's a code of ethics. We have our own code of ethics. So I, I'll share an interesting thing with everybody that you'll find. I'll tell you in a second. Here's our power agents of the month. We Every month we honor two power agents. Um, they were just featured at our live event. There's our logo. You download the logos. Now, um, I just, I will show you this about this, this. Now I know NAR has code of ethics, so power agents have one too. And I'll show you this because a lot of people don't know this. And this is something you all should know, power agents and non-power agents. That um, I collect antiques. You'll see a couple of them behind me. That's the uh, Encyclopedia Britannica behind me, 13th edition. Anyway, so, so some of the stuff I read, 1898 was the first Webster's Dictionary. First one, 1898. Oh, it's still loading. Sorry. It's almost there. And if you looked up the definition of integrity in the Webster's Dictionary of 1898, it said, the, it said a bunch of things. But one of the things said fair dealings with people in the transfer of property. So in 1898, our industry was actually the definition of integrity. I can't believe this has taken so long. Um, so let me just go off that and let it finish. So part of our commitment for power agents to help bring integrity back into the industry, being integrity, being your word, uh, not over promising un, uh, and over, uh, uh, you know, over promise and under deliver, but actually the opposite. Anyway, so that's one of our code. That's our first code is to be your word. Next question, Julie. Uh, Blanca says power agent coaching is so valuable, not just with all the material available, but the weekly coaching and webinars are great. Nowadays, most broker offices are not having weekly meetings. So there's no opportunity for questions and answers. Attending these coaching and webinars helps address a lot of concerns. Thank you for your simple style of coaching. It's appreciated. You're welcome. You're Thanks welcome. That. Awesome. Uh, Emma Nada says, I have an open door preliminary offer for a seller, but she does not want to sign a contract but she, because she doesn't want to commit and they only pay 3000 How do I handle this? So, so it sounds like, am I hearing this right, that there's a homeowner that doesn't want to sign 
and they're only they only want to pay three percent. Is that right? They only they can only pay three thousand dollars. She doesn't want to sign a contract because I guess she's got open door. Isn't that the like the oh open door? Yeah. Well, oh, she has open door. Yeah. I'm not a, yeah, that sounds like maybe something we should handle on the coaching call. Yeah, I'm let's have that on the coaching calls. That's a very specific question. I will tell you if they're if they're in contract with Open Door, then then because if they if they are listed, like unless Open Door changed their policy, there's not a listing thing. They're like they're buying the property, which means they're in contract already. Or so it sounds like even if they change their model, it sounds like she's restricted in selling her house. Uh, based on open door and that's that's unfortunate and um she should try and get out of that otherwise she's probably going to lose uh on so many levels yeah excellent by the way i will say this by the way if you go to classroom and you type in i buyer there are um you'll see a lot here i did several trainings um and recordings and videos on the iBuyer, why it is the absolute worst thing for a homeowner. And I go through the slide deck with you. It looks like we have two versions of it, Julie. Can Gail, uh, can uh, Sarah look into the two versions? Oh, that's a video. I'm sorry, never mind. So this is the actual training, and this is the slide deck where I teach you how to present to a homeowner why they should not want walk but run away as quickly as possible from iBuyers. It is the worst thing for them. And I break it down why it is. And then you can then communicate it to a homeowner. Okay. I love it. Um, Next question. Right. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, is Friday night a good time to host a neighborhood open house? Friday night? Friday night. Yeah, I don't know if I would do a Friday night. You, you, you can experiment. I will tell you, evening open houses, it's a hit or miss. And I think it might even be a local or community thing, meaning, you know, it may work Friday night for some of you and like maybe uh, like in, in, ten in Knoxville, Tennessee, but uh, Friday night in Miami may not work as far as the turnout is concerned. So I nighttime ones, you've got to know your market and you won't know it until you experiment a few times. So uh, my most important message on that is if you do it for the first time, don't, and you don't have a good turnout, don't say, oh, well, evening ones don't work. No, no, it just didn't work that evening. Try it again. Just pick a different night. Awesome. Marina says, any advice on property that's not typical? It's a Gothic style, almost historical, but like in a horror movie, don't laugh. Sorry, I laughed. It is not for a family with kids, but an entertainment antique house party, um, house for parties. Um, I did a lot of open houses and lots of people are coming to see it, which was on the market for seven years. Offers are coming in wow. below what the owner's asking of 750. Any ideas? Yeah. Well, first of all, there's nothing. If you're getting a lot of showings, a lot of activity, uh, and no offers or lower offers that tells you that the, there it's telling you the house is not worth 750 period. And you just need to be honest and communicate that to a homeowner. So in any market, if you're getting showings, but no offers or lower offers, there's your answer. You're doing your job. Your job. Here's the thing. Your job for an agent. Your job when you're the listing agent is not, listen to me. Everybody listen to me. Don't, Amanada, don't go anywhere. I want you to hear this. Your job as the listing agent is not to sell the house. That is a mistake that gets you twisted and you make other mistakes. Your job is not to sell the house. Your job is to market the house so that every buyer that could potentially buy the house knows this house is for sale. That's your job. Now, it sounds like you're doing your job. You're getting showings. You're getting activity. But the offers are not coming in. That's not your fault. The offers or they're coming in low is because the buyers, the ones that actually dictate what it's worth, are telling you what it's worth. So listen to them. This is what you got to tell the homeowner. You need to distinguish. See, the homeowner wants to make it your job to sell it. So that way, when it doesn't happen, it's your fault. You've got to correct that. 
My job, Mr. and Mrs. Hanahana, is to bring people to the store. If I own a department store and I bring the customers in and they leave without buying anything, it's not because I didn't bring them into the store. They're telling you everything in the store is not good. It's not worth to buy. Either the quality is not good or the price is not good. You have control over the price, not me. You pick this. I've already told you I think we need to be a different price. I'll keep doing my job. Don't worry. I'm going to keep pro market. I'll keep bringing people by. But if it keeps sitting here, don't look to me for that. That's on you. This is what you got to say. All right, I'm done with that. Go ahead, next question, Julie. I love it. Maureen says the neighborhood open house has to only be an hour or so, correct? Yes, good question. Uh, sorry, I went, in, I went off on that answer long. Um, yes, the neighborhood open house does not have to be four, five, ten hours. That could be an hour or two hours. Yeah. Awesome. I would still maybe do two hours so you're not rushing, get to you know, build relationship, you know, go slow with it. So, yeah. I, I know a lot of our power agents, they also go around the neighborhood before their open house and door knock and say, I'm going to be down here. It's like a, you know. There's another like one. Like your pop-up store, right? So if you've got questions or whatever, you can just come in and, and, and talk to me, if you, whatever, you know, so. Or so if you know somebody you can, that's got you, questions, come talk to me. You can, you can mail them the invitation. You can call them, slide dial them. You can door knock. Next question. I love it. Uh, Tish says, I've been in the business for 20 years and doing well, but I need some new motivation. So I just signed up. Awesome. I think we are coming to the end of the. Okay. We are at the end. I see that we've answered everybody's questions. So here's what we're going to do. Um, number one is um, thank you everybody for spending your time. We are going to close this out now. So here's what's going to happen. Sarah, if you can put that pop-up thing again. If you are uh, an, if you are a power agent, go to the classroom to download the slides, and this recording will be up on the site shortly, in the next day or two. Um, if you are a guest, a not power agent, listen, it's only five dollars. You've got nothing. This is a this, this is not a risk. Like if you're not sure, but I said this before. If I got, if you got any value, if you learn anything in, in an hour, can you imagine what maybe 30 days could be? You won't even know though, if you're not in it, you got to be in it to win it. So you're going to get off this call and probably waste five dollars on something that's going to be not valuable to you. Like this can be, you know, one of the things Julie wants me to say, one other thing is, is the, is the, um, is our, our directory that power agents get. When you sign, when you become a power agent, you're put into a directory and there's about five referrals a month going back and forth to fellow power agents. So we've had power agents tell us just being in the directory is worth the membership. Like even if I didn't show up for anything, just being a power agent using the logo and being in the directory is worth 47 a month. But once again, don't worry about 47. I don't want you to commit, commit to that. Uh, just the five dollars so you can check us out and see if it's going to help you. All right. So I thank you for your time very much. Uh, power agents, don't for everybody, don't forget we don't just listen, sell real estate, we actually help people get to their next level in their life. So the money that we make is a gauge as to how many lives we've touched. So just focus on making a difference in the world using real estate as your platform to do that. Focus on that. Take the stress off of, I got to sell. I got to close. I got to get listings. I got to handle objections. But, but relax. Believe in your value. Go out there and share you. And there's going to, listen, there's going to be some people who want to be with you. There's some people going to want to trust you and, and, and hire you. And, to be, and there's people that there's not. You can't make everybody happy. So your job is not to make everybody happy or not to have everybody love you. Your job is to go find the people who do want your help, who do want to love you. And that's it. Okay. So go get them. We love you here. Stay safe, stay focused, and don't forget to keep smiling. All right. Bye everybody.